All right, so if you see my face changing different colors here because the sun's just... But I said we do this like brand vlog, so I mean, whatever. Uh, hey, we're not doing it in a car. Yeah, that's true. Um, <clears throat> so, okay, we got uh, Legend of Korra. We got uh, uh, Beginnings, part one and part two. And Though, uh, I think they should have called it something different. I think it should have been titled About Fucking Time. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> I guess this is a little bit better. Oh, I don't know. I was like, no, it's like, holy shit, was that really good? <laughs> We're sitting on this for like six, seven episodes. Like, what episode is this? I, I don't know. Something Where are we? But so. yeah, so. I mean, it's like, yeah, man, was this like so freaking good. I mean, this was, it, it really felt like the original Avatar shows. But on top of that, it's like you get the origin of of where the Avatar started and the spirit world and all this great stuff and it doesn't feel like hey we're just it, for lack of a better even though I like the movie it doesn't feel like The Hobbit where it's like hey look that thing you kind of recognize it's very much hey this really explains everything I mean this it's not just a gimmick it's actually a good story on its own like even if this didn't connect to Avatar at all it's still a solid story and it's still really really good and yeah, actually, when I cut back to Korra, I was sort of like, oh. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's funny, because I get a lot of flack. Uh, people keep saying, well, she's a teenager. Well, what do you expect? Well, what kind of story is that? That. This. Yeah. The, this like, the, this is how you take an angst. Because, like, this guy, the first one, the first Avatar, he's a douchebag yeah, when he it starts, starts off. a jerk. Though, to be fair, he's he, stealing food for his friends. No, but, you, you know, he's, but he's not feeding a judge to a yeah, polar no, bear man bear pig. But, yeah, no, but, but, but he's it, still, but still stealing the fire. He's going to use it for his own needs, you know. He's starting a revolution, yeah. you know, just more for himself. But he he learns, and that's, and that's great. And in the first season, Korra did learn, and then... It's like, yeah, it's well, like, see, he learned yeah. his lesson, and then he stuck with the, that. The and teenager going, excuse only goes so far, because if that were the case, then shouldn't we be singing the praises of Anakin Skywalker as one of the greatest <laughs> characters ever written? Well, he's a teenager, therefore, that, no, it's, there's a good and a bad well, way to write this stuff. And I, it hasn't been awful, but it, it's been a little mad this season. So I, I think far. that argument actually is insulting to teenagers. To say, oh, oh yeah. well, as a teenager, eh, it's like, uh, no, you know, teenagers, yes, there's every age is going to have, you know, a con, but there's a lot of pros. And one of the things is that, you know, teenagers do learn people. But learn. then she's been sheltered. You don't get it. She's been sheltered. Therefore, uh, she can be boring. The, yeah. Well, no. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't work that well. This guy's shelters. He's he's living in a shack. Yeah, with you know, uh, with tree boomy. Um, but I get uh, like a number of people asking, "Well, is this it? Is this what you want?" I'm like, "Well, yes, absolutely." And this is a great episode. But it also really just nailed how slow this season has been. Because I'm like, "Wow!" In one hour, they gave us an angsty sort of character who went through a whole journey and transformation, and it's taken us a season and a half. Yeah, I feel and we're like we're still out there with Cora. I feel like I watched a season of something. Yeah, I felt like like this was like the Cimmerillion or something like that. Like I just saw this great big epic story, and it had everything. It had interesting characters. It had uh, this great arc. It had so much information about like the spirit world and the human world and so much information and it just man was this it, good it told us everything we've been needing to know for six episodes now and like it, it did really everything. effectively and really like i'm kind of like i'm wondering again i was like should this episode have run first uh, or uh, should yeah. we have been i don't know i don't but i mean i'm i'm very happy i'm like I'm really interested to see. It's like now that Cora has seen this whole story, will this have an effect? Yeah, literally yeah. when she woke up and she was like, "I'm Cora, I'm the Avatar." I seriously shouted, shouldered, like, "Good, now do something! <laughs> like, act like it! Yeah, act like an Avatar. Learn something, you know, just." Yeah, I, I'm really hoping that. I mean, it looks like they didn't do the amnesia thing that much. It was more just an excuse to get this backstory, but. It, I'll lie. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm no, fine. I don't have a problem. Man. Yeah, because it was such a good uh, backstory. I guess it's um, a cock tease, but it's not something that we were really like, oh, we need an amnesia story. So that, yeah, uh, I mean, it's just, I'm really hoping this will like have an effect on her because this was such a good episode. But at the same time, 
it, there's little to no Korra in it, so it's not like, okay, well, we're back on track. Well, no, we're given the story from something totally different in a sense. But it's great, and well, it does, hopefully it'll tie into everything really well. Well, I'm sure it will, because, I mean, it did give us the whole backstory. Now I'm wondering, is Vatu influencing Unalak? Is Unalak actually secretly working for Rava or thinks he is? Uh, is Vatu influencing it? Maybe that... Somebody came up with a good theory, and I don't think they're going to go this way. I was like, maybe, like, Lin Bei Fong acts like she's taking stupid pills and everybody else is acting like an idiot because Vatu now is influencing them. Like, <laughs> I doubt I, that, I, but... Really doubtful, but, I mean, that'd be cool. But, I mean, maybe now this is all going to come together and be connected, which well, is what I'm hoping. <clears throat> and the nice thing is that there is, which I'm hoping they'll do too, you know, maybe address why Korra has been such a pain this season, you know, or a repeat at least, is that, you know, this guy, this Juan character, went through this too, that he did start off with kind of a jerk and kind of stuff. And I, I, like, good I like that connection. And, and I'm hoping... I just feel yeah, like we could have done that in the first together. season instead of like... and. and I'm still having yeah, the well, issue of what it? did we need to see in the first season that bears any meaning here. We well, still with Korra's character. Yeah, with Korra's character, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, well, even... Where did Tenzin and the family go? I, they, they've just completely yeah, dropped out of, of the picture. Um, um, but... Well, and, and whether or not... Um, <sighs> totally lost my thought. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, great episode. <laughs> Damn, no, I, I had something. I like the well. They they brought back all the Asian influence elements. I like the the physical manifestation of Yin Yang with Rava and, and Vatu and Benny Lava and Klatu Barata Niktu. And yeah, you know, it's like, <laughs> like I was like okay until like... you get to that big fight at the end. And it's like the big Yin Yang. They did the same thing in Avatar with the two fish. I'm always like, okay, that's poor. Dun Dun guy, just but... shouted subtle, <laughs> <laughs> too subtle. No, I like the original one where they were fighting. Yeah, like and, that. And they that were sort of in the shape sense. of the Yin Yang when they were fighting. Um, yeah, like like that was more clever. It wasn't quite as obvious. You know, all of them. My only thing is. Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna have to check out the ending to the original series again, but they may be playing a little loose with the mythology here, because I thought the lion turtle said at the end of the first, it was like, before the elements, humans were mastering the energies in themselves or something, and I swear to God, I'm watching this, I was like, nah, they're just getting it all from lion turtles. <laughs> like, so, I, I don't know, it seems like there's a bit of a disconnect, but if that's my biggest complaint, I'm yeah, like, that's not that there's no freaking midichlorians here or anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, oh, I, I remember what I was going to say, the, um, what actually is, the one part I got a little confused, she's like, I have to close the gate before the end of the world. I guess I got a little confused, like, is that the bad spirit's gonna come back and make things Harmonic unbound? Convergence! Yeah, like, what? The greatest I didn't garage get... band ever! I, I didn't That's... quite get what that was. Like, the, even in the, the backstory the, the, the door of... swings both ways. When the planet's all aligned, Gozer comes. The No, there's a North Pole and a South Pole. And the door is open, and there's some sort of connection. You saw that with the two portals there, and then there was yeah, the tree yeah. in the middle, and... When that happens, I guess one or the other could take over if they're not in balance or something. I didn't quite get that part of it. Yeah, see, that's what I Once mean. Once every like, 10,000 years, opening. when the planets align, there is the chance for shit to go down. Okay. And, and you want everything in balance okay, or else that's it's 10,000 why... years of darkness, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Okay, that's why the big bad spirit was like, oh, this time I'm gonna win, because it was the yeah. 10,000 years this guy had. Okay, now I see. Okay, and now it's coming around again. And I liked their to out, too, it. where he's just like, well, that's not too bad. I mean, if you light can never be destroyed, then you'll just come back and you're like, well, yeah, no, in the grand scheme of things, everything's fine. Everything yeah. stays in balance. But it's just bad for you. Humanity will be wiped out. He's like, yeah. oh. How, how you like him is 10,000 years of darkness thing? Just yeah. like, yeah, that's yeah. a good point. So I like that, too. I, I, like, yeah. I thought that was a good way of being like... Because I was like, well, wait, if light and dark can never be defeated. It was like, oh, well, you can still just totally, like, obliterate the planet for 10,000 years, and then light eventually will come back, like, after a volcano. Yeah, but, but still, 10,000 years, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, now, but here's the... Again, in this backstory, you get... When he's fighting the big bad spirit at the end, I mean, you kind of get it. If he wins, oh, darkness is going to rule and stuff like that. And it's just so simple, so quick, and you got it. And then going back to the, the core one, I have to admit, I'm still like... We have to close the portal, whatever. I'm like, 
because of who or what? Is it Tarlock 2.0 who's going to, like, do something bad in there? It's like, I'm still confused what is going to happen. Uh, they've... It, it, it's still a little confusing. Do I use the... what term? Have they Noland this? It's just told out of order or something? Actually, Nolan films I follow easier in the way... It's just not put together very well. I, it, there's a good story here, it's just like... Yeah, well after seeing that, now it's like, oh, now I sort of see I'm the like, story you're trying to tell. Yeah, but I'm like, but we had to sit through six episodes of really meandering around that. I'm like, th there was a better way to display this, I think. I mean, well, you know what, I'll reserve final judgment. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not done. done. I mean, we'll, we'll see what but, So, so do. far, I, yeah, I'm kind of with you. I'm like, it... It's a good story. I think I get what she needs to do now, but it's like, why was it told this way? <laughs> yeah, but and like I said, I mean, I'm still not sure what evil and how it's going to happen. But well, we, we still just... have none of the motivations for any of the villains. We don't. I mean, Varric being a villain. Okay, that's cool. But what is then, his motivation? Well, don't know. What what's is he going to Uno do? Hawks that's motivation. like we need to close the doors. What's he gonna do? That's going to make things my, so bad. My guess is he's being influenced by Vatu. Uh, but even that, that's kind of, yes. But, but, but maybe that's part of it, too. Maybe it'll be revealed. I mean, because if you think about it, war, I mean, he was saying it, he's like, war, power, aggression, you know, these things feed me! Uh, it, you know, so maybe... maybe. But yeah, but even just from a basic story, hey, we had to stop X, like, even though there might be a twist. Like, again, with Amon, it's like, we knew why we had to stop him and what he yeah. was doing. You know, here it's like just... Something bad's gonna happen. Might mean ten thousand years of dark, but we don't know why or how or. And if you want to keep the characters' motivations hidden, because I mean, I'm not gonna disagree that it's kind of cool that we're just like, okay, maybe Coronel has to decide. Maybe Unalak's not a villain. Maybe he is. May you know? Maybe Varric. Like we don't. But yeah, but it's still. You have to find an interesting way to tell that up until this point, because we've waited six episodes and it's kind of been like an exercise in patience from a show yeah. that I do genuinely like, but it's still kind of like, you keep checking your watch, like, okay, really? <laughs> yeah, no, the, this one, I, I mean, I was totally invested, and I, I just loved it, so, um... The, uh, oh, and the animation. <laughs> yeah, oh god, the style, and the backgrounds, and the style, I mean, just a, a, a different was, style, uh, different look, and it really worked. It was like a, it was very, uh, Japanese, uh, ukiyo-e paintings. Yeah, um, I mean, it's... Woodblock, like, uh... Oh, uh, what are their names? Um, if you like this style of animation, look up two artists, uh, Hokusai and Hiroshige. They did nothing but stuff like this, and watching it, it seemed really clear to me that that was their main influence. There may have been some Chinese in there too, but a lot of it seemed like Hiroshige and Hokusai, and the wave, the giant tsunami wave that everybody sees at like a Japanese sushi bar. Yeah, that's or it's in like every massage um, place you go to. <laughs> yeah, so look them up because it very much was that, except for the clouds, which seemed like something out of Secret of Kells, but... Yeah, well, well even like the layout of the city I, on the turtle was kind of Secret of Kells, too. Yeah, um, but I like that. It was, yeah, oh, I, it was I basically it. like a Hiroshige woodblock combined with, like, Secret of Kells, like, their own sort of style, and, oh my god, And, and spirited stunning. away with all the spirits going to the bathroom. Yeah, somebody watched, <laughs> somebody watched a few Miyazaki movies. <laughs> the other thing I'll say, just to maybe give credit to another movie and that Princess wrote, Mononoke, too, I got yeah, some with the, the deer, burning down the uh, forest cat. and the, yeah. Um, the, uh, the other thing I'll, I'll give credit to is that the lemur in this episode is really cool, and he reminded me a lot of Willem Dafoe from that John Carter movie that everyone's like, yeah, I'm the one guy who saw it, and it's not as bad as everyone says, like, it's not good, but it's, it, people are way too mean on that film. And he just reminded me, you haven't seen it either, so you shouldn't talk. <laughs> yeah. I just no, don't want to be associated with people who are just like, you like John Carter, what the hell? <laughs> no, for a, for a dumbass action film, I thought it was fine, but I don't know the books or anything, and, and I'm sure they're better, but... No yeah, comment. For, no, for just a dumbass action film, and I really like the Willem Dafoe character in there, and I, I haven't seen a character like that supportive and that interesting and that tough and strong and funny and stuff. Uh... And this is a character very similar to that. I like those kind of characters. I mean, it's really just giving a compliment to that lemur character. I thought he had a really clear... All these characters are really clear, well, good, this strong is, Okay, I will say this. I, I have not sure. liked the animation as much in this season. They switched studios. I liked the first season's style more. 
That being said, and that's not really the studio's fault, it's just different styles of doing things. So that being said, like, this is like a redemption episode, because this episode was so brilliantly animated. Uh, the, the animation hasn't bothered me It hasn't bothered much. me. No, it, it doesn't kill the show for me, but I do when people talk about it, I'm like, yeah, I do like season it, one's animation. It's clear they do the spiritual stuff, and, and sort of the flatter stuff, and the stylistic stuff much better than the realistic stuff. And mm -hmm. so when we get an episode like this, it just shines, and it, yeah. it, it looks beautiful. And whenever the spirits come up, they shine too, but we have so little of them, you know, until now, that, you know, I think that's why it hasn't had a chance to really bloom. I love that. <laughs> I love the ending too. It's like, this will be my job. I will be the avatar and bring peace to the world. Cut to his like corpse. Oh, like, that was a oh wow, wow, I failed. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, no, humanity sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like that. They they turned him into like a, a bodhisattva, or, or you know, they turn him into like a Buddha character has to keep reincarnating and coming back yeah. until humanity, no, I... until he's able to enlighten all souls. And and I'm like that. That was cool. It, it added a lot to the mythos, and I guess... I don't think I was missing the mythos that much, because I liked season one just fine, and there was very little of the actual mythos in it. Yeah, I mean, well, but even... this one's just been missing something pretty much since episode one. Since... It's been missing the spirits, and here's yeah. one about the spirits! Yeah, it's like we finally <laughs> got to the... We got our spirit point. episode! In a season called Spirits. That's more police. That's that would have been the other name of this episode. The Legend of Korra gets to the point. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, we loved it, man. So uh, hopefully we'll see you at the next one. Take care.